So here we have a table and from that table we need to be able to answer some of these questions. So the first question is find chain isomers. So we need to find all chain isomers. So let's first talk about what isomers are. So isomers for example would be something like this. Um, let's quickly make an example. Okay, okay, so there's one molecule and then here's the next one all these hydrogens Don't you just love drawing out hydrogens all day? Okay, so if you had to go look at this molecule if you had to go count all the carbon there would be one two three four So four carbons and then there would be ten uh, Hydrogens don't believe me you can go check one two three four five six seven eight nine ten now if you had to look at the bottom It would be exactly the same so that's what isomers are. Isomers have the same amount of each element. However, um, there's different arrangements which would then uh, either be classified as chain, functional, or positional. But we've spoken about this before, right? So I'm not going to go into the deep theory of that now. Um, this is more just practice. So what I think we should do is let's just start with molecule A and just see how many carbons it has. One, two, three, four, five. Now let's quickly go see if there's any other molecule that has five carbons because otherwise we're wasting our time because we know that with isomers they have to have the same Amount of everything. So let's just check the carbons now. This here is an ester. That's methyl So that's one carbon and then ethanoate. So that's gonna have three carbons altogether um, This one here is gonna have three carbons. This one's gonna have three carbons. This is prop So that's three carbons. This one has one two three four carbons. This one has one two three four five Actually, I've got a little idea, guys. Let's just go work out everything. So this one's going to have a total of 12 hydrogens. You can go check that out. Um, methyl ethanoate. Okay, so methyl ethanoate, um, that's an ester. So you could go draw this out. You could go draw out methyl um, ethanoate, which would look something like that. And if you had to go fill that all in, you'd realize that it's going to have three carbons six hydrogens and then two oxygens okay um this might take a while but i mean this is probably the best way so then and then this one here has one two three four five six hydrogens six hydrogens and then two oxygens ah you see later on we might be able to look at these ones okay um okay so let's quickly have a look here this one's gonna have um six hydrogens and then one oxygen prop NL. So that's an aldehyde. So that's going to have three carbons where the double bond oxygen is on the side because it's an aldehyde. Okay. I know this may be a little fast for some of you, but yeah, I'm just trying to, you could pause and you could just try to go work out all the structural formulas for each one. Um, so this one would be C3, six H's and O. Ah, look at that. You see, so that's going to be something later as well. Um, okay. Now this one over here at G is five carbon. Hydrogens would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then oxygen, there's one. Okay. Um, this one here, H, has one, two, three, four, five. Ah, this is a nice one. This has got 12 hydrogens. Now this is an alcohol with four carbons. So one, two, three, because it says butan. And then on carbon number two, there is an OH. OH, okay. And then the rest is all hydrogen. Okay, so it's going to have um, four carbons, 10 hydrogens, and an oxygen. This molecule here, J, four carbons, and 10 hydrogens. Uh, this one at K is a carboxylic acid. You see how it has the CO and the OH? That's a carboxylic. It's got one, two, three, four carbons, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens, two oxygens. Pentanoic acid, that is a carboxylic acid with five carbons. Um, and then let's put the double bond oxygen OH over here. And then each of these are hydrogens. Okay, so this one's going to have uh, five carbons. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hydrogens and two oxygens. Okay, now this is going to make our life a little bit easier to just try to figure out um, chain isomers because isomers have to be the same. So 
what I can do now is I can see C5 H12. Here's another one. Uh, any others, any others, any others. Okay, so they will likely, they could be a candidate. Then C3 H602. Is there any other? Yes, there. Um, that's it. Then C3 H60. It's those ones over there. Okay, I just randomly stopped with this one. It's quite weird. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hydrogen, and then an oxygen. Okay, so C4H10O. So C4H10O could be there, and that's about it. I can't see any other any others that are the same. Maybe I'm missing something. Let's just double check. C4. Okay, no, that's all fine. That's all fine. That's all fine. Um, yeah, we did that one. Okay. Yeah, that looks okay. So now it's easier to see which ones are chain isomers because they have to have the same amount of everything. So let's look, for example, at um, these two. Let's see if they are chain isomers. Well, they actually are going to be chain isomers because if you look at this one, its longest chain is one, two, three, four. If you look at this one, its longest chain is one, two, three, four, five. So those are going to be chain isomers. That would be A and H. Okay, so they are together. Um, methyl ethanoate and this one. No, that's not going to be a chain isomer. They are actually, okay, so this one here is a carboxylic. This is a carboxylic. And this one here is an ester. So when they have different homologous groups, then they are called functional isomers. This one here is a ketone, and this one here is an aldehyde. So they have a different, they are also functional isomers. This molecule here is an alcohol, and this molecule here is also an alcohol. Okay, so let's see the chain though. So if we look at this one, it's got one, two, three, four carbons in the main chain. And this one has one, two, three, four carbons in the main chain. So they are the same. So it's, they, they are not chain isomers. So I think we found the only chain isomers. Okay. Now for functional isomers, these have to be different things. So for example, B and C are functional isomers because the ones are ester and the ones are carboxylic. And then D and E are also because the one is an aldehyde and the other one is a ketone. So we could say D plus E. Okay, and then positional isomers would be F and I. The reason is, is that the chain is the same, so it's not chain isomers. They both alcohols, so that can't be functional, but it's the position of the alcohol that is different. Here you can see the OH is on carbon number one. Here you can see the OH is on carbon number two. So that position is different, so that's why they are called position isomers.